Welcome to the Santu Pearls stock market commentary video, your weekly window on stock market technical conditions featuring the proprietary bull bear point and figure market breadth summary chart for February 10th, 2019. Market breadth. With this past week's market advance, our bull bear point and figure ratio at 1.38 fell from 1.66 last week. The total count of securities in bullish or bearish patterns decreased 5% to 3,102. The count of bearish stocks increased 7%, while the count of stocks in bullish patterns decreased 12%. The Santu Pearls PNF Market Breadth Summary Chart shows us a market now five weeks in bullish territory. Paid subscribers have access to the open office calc data from which the chart is generated. You may become a paid subscriber by visiting s2pmarketsignal.com, clicking Membership, clicking Register, and following the prompts. To receive the weekly Santu Pearls stock market commentary free of charge via email, simply enter your name and your email address in the spaces provided and click Subscribe. The well-known market breadth indicator, the Nasdaq McClellan Summation Index, rose 207 points for the 11th advance in 22 weeks. At a positive 382.27 points, it has risen above the July 2017, March 2018, August 2018, and February 2017 tops and continues below the remaining three tops above plus 100 in the last 30 months, as well as continuing above all five bottoms below minus 100 in the last 30 months. Volume Analysis In this week's volume analysis, the NASDAQ Composite Index ended in neither accumulation nor distribution mode, with average daily volume lower than the prior week. In the last two weeks, the NASDAQ had three accumulation days and one distribution day. Accumulation days are counted when the index closes up on higher volume than the prior market day, while distribution days occur when the index closes down on volume higher than the prior market day. Last week, the NASDAQ ended in neither accumulation nor distribution mode on higher average daily volume. Momentum at Monday, 1.14 close, the CCI 20 daily had six days above zero, forming a Woody's uptrend. Now at a positive 73.13, down from a positive 155.34 last week, the CCI 20 daily continues outside the plus or minus 50 range and will need to fall back into that range in order to form a zero-line reject long entry point. In Woody's CCI trading system, six consecutive bars above or below zero are required for a change of trend. The weekly CCI 20 of the NASDAQ Composite Index began a Woody's downtrend 12 weeks ago, while the daily CCI 20 began a Woody's uptrend three weeks ago. The CCI 20 weekly in a Woody's downtrend, rose to a positive 31.08 from a negative 4.86 last week. It continues within the plus or minus 50 range required for a valid zero line reject short entry signal if the CCI 20 weekly declines next week. Industry rotation the last two weeks. All of the top five industries are positive, and all of the bottom five are negative. Summary, gold and silver and some tech on the top. Oil services, banking, and retail on the bottom. Bullish, disk drives continues in the top five. CompTech has re-entered the top five. Brokers has left the bottom five. Bearish, KBW Bank, and S&P Retail continue in the bottom five. Gold and silver continues in the top five. Semis, computer hardware, and REITs have left the top five.
Focus this week from www.mises.org. The Pseudo-Psychology Behind Monetary Policy by Frank Shostak. The following are a few key points. Milton Friedman believes that if the central bank were to follow a constant money growth rate rule, this would eliminate fluctuations caused by variable changes in the money supply growth rate. The constant money growth rate rule could also make money neutral in the short run, and the only effect that money would have is on general prices in the long run. Thus, according to Friedman, on the average, there is a close relation between changes in the quantity of money and the subsequent course of national income. In his Nobel lecture, Robert Lucas expressed disagreement. According to Lucas, if everyone understands that prices will ultimately increase in proportion to the increase in money, what force stops this from happening right away? Consequently, Lucas has suggested that the reason why money does generate a real effect in the short run is not so much due to the variability of monetary time lags, but more bound up with whether money changes were anticipated or not. If monetary growth is anticipated, then people will adjust to it rather quickly and there will not be any real effect on the economy. Only unanticipated monetary expansion can stimulate production. Both Friedman and Lucas are of the view, although for different reasons, that it is desirable to make money neutral in order to avoid unstable and therefore unsustainable economic growth. If unexpected monetary policies can cause real economic growth, what is wrong with this? Why not constantly surprise people and cause more real wealth? While unanticipated monetary growth cannot grow the economy, it definitely produces a real effect by undermining the pool of real savings and thereby weakening the real economy. Likewise, anticipated money growth cannot be harmless to the real economy. Even if the money growth rate is fully anticipated, there is always someone who gets it first. We can thus conclude that regardless of expectations, tampering with the economy by means of monetary policies will always undermine the foundations of the real economy. Hence, monetary policy can never be neutral. Thank you for watching this week's Santu Pearls stock market commentary video featuring the proprietary bull bear point and figure market breadth summary chart compiled by Donald Pearl, www.s2pmarketsignal.com. For Santu Pearls stock market commentary, I'm Cynthia Pearl, hoping that you are enjoying a peaceful and pleasant weekend that you are looking forward to a prosperous and productive week coming up, and wishing you true success.